Hola, uh, hello, I'm back. Uh, I had to change the schedule and I apologize if I didn't notify it, but it's been it's been complicated, but here I am, here I'm going back into what I started and not about to finish it anytime soon, not stop doing it, just getting back into it. So welcome back. And let's jump right to it. Last time we work, we talk, we had this as our guide, working with the tutorial index of Chimera. And we covered the menu version for manipulation, selection, and change, and as well as the command version, which I think it's very important because uh, you can use UCSF Chimera either way and there is no single way, no single right way to use it. Both are powerful and both can help you ha on performing that any task you want. So both are something worthwhile to learn. So let me just set the title of this stream. And we'll be off. You should already launch your Chimera, such as the way I did over here. And customize it in a way that works for you. I'm going to repeat the way I customize it, but you don't have to follow the same pattern I do. And you can find ways that work for you. So I'm going to have my model panel, which is something I really, really like. My side view, which is something that I also like to have around in order to arrange the way I see things on the screen. Sorry for the extra noise, I forgot to put on my stream headphones. There we go. And I really want to watch the levels. I don't want to make just strenuous noises that just distract you from what I'm trying to to show. And I really, my desk is a mess today. So I have a bunch of cables just laying around. I don't even know if I have the power cord for, for the computer, which I should. I don't care dropping from the stream. Let's see. Oh, okay, I do have it. We're covering on that part. <laughs> so, uh, I you notice that on the bottom, and that was the previous session, I had the command line. Now I'm going to add it here, as well as the reply log. The reply log sometimes is, I gotta confess that I'm guilty as charged in that regard, that I sometimes add just as a, an afterthought, but, but it's really important to have it because it's the only feedback or one of the most important and complete feedback that you get from the computer, from the program, when something fails. You, you don't want to lose sight of it if something goes wrong. It's, it's not as if you are going to have catastrophic failures, but if a process is finishing in a way that you don't want and you don't know why it happened, you need to look at the log. So here it is. Now uh, let's jump right in. Getting started, menu version, part two. Mm -hmm. So for this exercise, we have another molecule to get this time. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is where the menu drops us. Last sessions, both command line and menus, what we did was look at how to interact with the structure and select things and then manipulate and show other things. So this time we're going to do a similar thing. Uh, 1D86, that is the structure we're going to use, 1D86. Uh, notice that, again, we already know how to get structures. We can do it uh, even from the command line, from the menus, using 
several ways to do it. So I'm going to go for the file fetch by ID menu and get it. This is the default representation that I get uh, just from downloading. This is clearly a DNA molecule with something bound, uh, an antibiotic, something like that. We might find out more information over here. I usually go for the preset one, interactive ribbons, and then publication one, just because I prefer in general to have a white background in my, in my work desk. But you can set it up any way you want. Remember that is not only up to you, but it should be something that helps you work, right? No, there's no right setup. Pick the one you like. You can see that in my reply log, now I have the sequence of the, the DNA, both from five prime or both strands from five prime to three prime. And let's see what the tutorial wants us to do. It says the structure contains the molecule netropsin bound to double helical DNA, initially shown as ribbon and stylized representation of the nucleic acid and sugar base. So what, does, what does that mean? This stylized representation is this. You notice that we don't see the phosphate groups, but we do see this representation of the saccharide, the ribose, that it's the base, uh, sorry, well, that it's at the that is supporting the nitrogenous base. And the nitrogenous base are represented as these steps. I guess that this one, sorry, that this one with two lumps represents a larger base, uh, a pyranine, a pyra, uh, pyrimidine, and purines, a purine, and over here, a pyrimidine, a, large, a smaller one. So that is the stylized representation. It's not looking to be chemically accurate, but just representative of what the DNA is supposed to look like. Move and scale with the mouse and the graphics window and yeah, follow the side view. That is one of the, sorry, one of the reasons I keep my side view. If I wanted, for example, to be very clear in showing you how or what do the bases represent? That's interesting. I cannot select only one. I'm selecting objects in this representation. Mm, I'm going to focus on the molecule back here, the netropsin. Yeah, I, I selected it and with the arrow increase the selection from one atom to the whole molecule. And I'm going to go for focus and pivot so I can get in close even though the selection is no longer visible, you don't see the green outlines, the molecule is still, sele still selected and as a pivot. And the side view helps you by allowing you to change the depth of the view and what things are cut or present in the, in the representation. So you don't have to use it all the time. I do, and I like to have very specific characteristics. Move a scale. Oh yeah, I, I wanted to show you this for a while. It's not super relevant, but but I'm gonna I, I don't wanna disconnect it. Let's see if I can get the camera in there. This is my pointing and moving device. Well just the moving, not the pointing. I use a trackpad, but this 3D mouse is what I use to operate the molecules. And it's an expensive piece of kit. However, it has very distinct advantages and some of those advantages is that you don't need to scroll throughout your desk or uh, you don't have to hold it just with the left or the right hand. I actually, even though I'm, though I'm right handed, I do operate it with my left hand and it's pretty comfortable. You can move, you can move scale translate with confidence and uh, because this is not advertisement, I may add uh, the details of where to get it, how to get it and some properties, some some characteristics, but it's just extra. If you have any mouse like this, I guess, uh, sorry, I shouldn't be showing brands, um, that should be enough, but, but I prefer that other thing for several reasons. So move a scale, find out how to be comfortable with your representation, that varies depending on what you are observing or what you wanna show. And well, they actually asking us to go for the presets, something that I, did um, uh, well accidentally 
and they say go to interactive 2 to so preset interactive 2 which is all atoms and because we have now a molecule that is not a macromolecule if you remember your biochemistry macromolecules are most are uh, proteins, nucleic acid, DNA, RNA, lipids, and saccharides and polysaccharides. Because the natropsin is not any of those molecules, it's not represented as sticks. It is shown to us, sorry for the put up, it is shown to us as spheres. That is to distinguish it from the rest. Water molecules are are present but they are just tiny spheres so they are very hard to find so this type of representation you can see clearly that it's there so you can identify things that are not macromolecules while uh, downplaying the presence of your micromolecules so we can change the carbons the carbon color and this guide is recommend us to go to select chemistry and select just the carbon change them to white let's do that select carbon actions color white it and this selection it's applied to everything that has a carbon both the macromolecule as well as the natropsin and then to go select structure solvent and height select structure solvent Oh, you see the tiny selection of those dots everywhere? And then atoms, bonds, height. Now the guide is here for me to show you how it looks like, how to look for it and where to find it. But if you are used to this being the menus, you the menu guide, you should know that you need to find the select menu, then the sub menu for chemistry, then the sub menu for element and find the element. And the same goes here. Here, the difference is that this structure menu is, um, well, very significantly different in that it selects not by the chemistry, but what has been grouped separately as solvent, uh, which is mostly oxygen atoms that are not connected covalently to other atoms. Just a second. Um, okay, yes. Remember that hiding atoms do not deselect them. That is, if we perform this step and then forget about it, forget that we perform it, and next time we want to change something, it's going to tell us, uh, it's going to affect only that, that it's still selected. That means if I forget that water is selected and I try to show spheres, well, the, the immediate effect is going to be to change the solvent molecules into spheres, not whatever I was thinking of or expecting to be modified. And you can always check on your chimera here in the bottom if there is a selection active. You can see that there is a, that a magnifying glass. It's highlighted in green, which is the default color, but you can change it. And it, if you put the mouse over, it, it tells us that there is 74 atoms selected. So that probably accounts for all of the water molecules that we selected through the menu. Residues can be identified by looking in the select residue menu or by hovering the cursor over atom and bond to see the information. And I think I've already shown you this, that Hovering gives you information about whatever you are hovering above. F now that I don't see the water, it's going to hard to be far, very hard to find. But here you see the difference between pointing to an atom and pointing to a bond. The bond tells us the name of the molecule. That is a DT, a deoxytimine. The residue is number 20 in the structure. It's part of chain B. Uh, the bond is between a phosphate and an oxygen, labeled oxygen P2, and the length is 1.478 Armstrongs. So you can see that the information 
display with this uh, hovering mouse it's quite wide and compassing it shows tons of information and you can also apply it everywhere as long as you can see the bond you can get to see that information notice that however the nomenclature of the atoms is not um, well, I actually don't know if it's chemically standard that if we were to look at a biochemistry book or a QPAC description, these atoms correspond precisely. But what I do know is that internally that is correct and it should only describe the atoms to that specific base, according at least to the base, to the amber naming scheme. Oh, sorry about that. I think it's the first time I connected this Wacom here, so uh, pardon me. Okay, what's next? Oh, sorry. Yeah, freeing the first time using this is. But well, anyway, don't for don't mind me. So let's use the special selections or the specific selections for nucleotides. Let's go to select residue, DA, deoxyadenine, actions color blue. Select residue, DA actions color and blue it's gonna be a dark blue okay now dc residues that is the oxycytosine cyan Deoxyguanine, yellow. And finally, deoxytimine, magenta. I'm going to clear the selection using the menus. So select clear selection. And now there should be nothing selected. And we should be ready to rock. So that what we have on Chimera now looks like that. Let's see. Oh, it's right, because I was centered on the on the netropsin, I'm going to focus on the whole molecule in actions focus. I'm going to set the pivot to, and now that should look yeah, roughly like that. There we go. So that was easy. Mm -hmm. Now we have not only the representation of a nucleic acid molecule, a DNA, a double helix, with something bound, but also we have identified by colors all of the pairs. So if we memorize the, n the colors, we could also we could find always that for every G there's a C and for every T there's an A, at least in this molecule. Now we can try some display styles. Um, this is selecting chain, just a chain. So let's do that. Actions at on bond spheres, then select chain. Notice the order of the instructions here. We are first indicating Chimera that whatever we select, we want it to be shown as a sphere. And then we add the selection. So let's do it. Action, bond, sphere. Nothing should change. Oh, well, actually everything changed. Maybe because I didn't have selected anything. That is, the, uh, the effect, the default effect was for everything on the screen. So let's only select chain add A this time. And then atom bond, uh, balls and sticks. Okay. Actions, atoms, bond, sticks. 
and then clear the selection and this ah but I did it wrong sorry so I'm gonna go back select A which was the previous step actions balls and sticks now that is correct clear the selection I'm gonna take a look at this before shutting it down well uh, changing and then everything sticks so if what I said makes sense and it's correct when I click on this stick option what I'm gonna get is everything changed into sticks only so the spheres as well the spheres as well as the sticks and the balls are gonna disappear and become just the sticks okay so yeah that's correct when there's no selection everything is affected don't forget that this is uh, straight from the tutorials on the UCSF camera page there is in the stream this link so you can find it easily without pain now we're going to change yet again this representation this time we're going to change for ribbon and what it, that ribbon is going to do is going to be it's going to be an, a representation different from this a uh, default one that is called how do they call them a stylized representation so let's do that go back and show ribbons it hides let, let's hide the ribbons here we can see the phosphates but as soon as we select the ribbons to be shown those phosphates are hidden so they're still there and they are of course playing a very relevant part of the structure of DNA and its chemistry but they are hidden from view to give us an stylized representation we can change the way the ribbons are shown from the default here to edged or round so let's go to edged first uh -huh. did you notice the little change and then rounded mm -hmm. however we still don't look like this image they did something else let's find out if we can do it too so DNA can be shown with special nucleotide objects. We will show lollipops, boxes, and ladder. That, that sounds interesting. Let's see if this is lollipop. So actions, atom bonds, nucleotide objects, and settings. So actions, atom bonds, nucleotide objects, and settings. This has opened this new window. And let's we need to select different things show side sugar and base as tube or slab so this is that one we need to set it to tube or slab okay tube or slab and then show base orientation to false show base orientation to false then slab style tab which is this one look at these options for how are they represented set slab style to skinny okay click slab option tab slab option tab uh, and set slab object to ellipsoid slab object to ellipsoid and click apply okay so so the overall result is that this the sugar that we were seeing as a hex, as a pentagon now the now is this tube the slab of the nucleotide is now this ellipsoid and i think that the skinny refers to the thickness and yeah well yeah they kind of look like lollipops it's actually a very 
sweet representation. Pardon the pun. Sorry, sorry. Okay, nucleotide settings can be applied just to the selected residues, not all of the DNA. One way to select a specific residues is in the sequence tool. So we, uh, oh, and notice they send us to favorites. We already did this with proteins, so favorites, sequence, and we can select a sequence of, of one or two change, chains, and here we go. Show the sequence of chain A and select one or a few residues in the sequence window. This selects the corresponding part of the structure, quit from the sequence window, and in the nucleotides dialog, also under tools depiction in the menu. So, yeah, well, we know this. We can go to this and select one or two, and that selection will become obvious, and all the changes will be affected only on that selection. Ah, well, yeah, let, let's quit that sequence. Or those two sequence windows. Quit. Quit. And then, <laughs> in the nucleotides dialog, under tools depiction, tools depiction, nucleotides, Oh, I guess, yeah, this is another way to access this menu. So, tools. The first time we access this, access this menu was atom bonds, nucleotide objects. And another way that they are showing us now is tools depiction nucleotides. And it's exactly the same window. This is one of those instances where we have two ways to do exactly the same thing. Now, show base orientation as true. So, show base orientation as true. Set a slab object to box. I think this is going to be... similar to the stylized... sorry, box, right? To the stylized uh, representation. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, it's similar to the stylized representation that we got when we opened the nucleotide, except that the saccharides, the sugars, are not shown as the pentagons we've seen before. And this is called, what, bumps? Since I don't have a selection, I'm not going to clear it. And let's try to show DNA as a ladder. So, so, so show side, sugar base as ladder. Ladder. In the ladder options, set wrong radius to 0.3. Ladder options, wrong radius 0.3. And click OK. Ah, <laughs> so this is this image, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah kind of reminds me of that DNA shown in Jurassic Park. Well, that, that's very illustrative of, of the things you can do with DNA. And to return to more general display styles, turn off the nucleotide objects. So actions, atoms, bonds, um, nucleotide objects, and off. That's very interesting because now I'm left without DNA. Oh, I mean, without the bases and just the ribbon representation. So I'm not going to change it the way I will do. I'm just going to follow the tutorial as it is. But just remember that it's very easy to reverse any mistake in representation just by going to the presets. Hide the ribbon and show everything as ball and stick. So hide ribbon in actions and then ball sticks. Mm -hmm. Finally, have some fun with, this, with surfaces. Now, this is interesting and useful for many, many reasons because 
as you can see in this image, this representation allows to see how this molecule, the natropsin, is interacting with the bases. So let's just do that. There's some building categories within structures such as main and ligand. When nothing is selected, everything is going to be, well, main, that is, the nucleotide is going to be shown. So let's do this. Action, surface, show. Mm. Wait, what did I do? Action, surface, show. No, I did it wrong. Notice that as described here, only the main molecule, the macromolecule is shown in surface, and both the water molecules and the netropsin are not shown as surfaces. So what this allows is to observe how some atoms, the, the netropsin as well as the water, are surrounding the surface of the DNA. Let's hide the surface and according to the instructions let's select the ligand. How did they do that? Ah, structure. Select structure ligand. It's clearly selected and now show its surface. There we go. Now mesh. Let's transform this solid surface into a mesh representation. Uh -huh. So this way we can see the ball and stick representation which allows us easily to find atoms, specific atoms in the structure as well as the surface over the DNA. The surface can, the surface color can be specified independently of the underlying atoms and the ligand surface here is tan and white because of the region and colors uh, used for the atoms. So since we still have the ligand selector, the selector they ask us to go to actions and uh, change the color. Actions, colors, all options I think. Yeah, all options. And then change the color the coloring applies to to surfaces, which is here, surfaces, and then select red and close. Mm, there we go. Now, of course, well, let me see if they don't do that. Yeah, they're gonna do it. Here we see the mesh in red, not the s not the, the atoms or the bonds, and here clearing the selection and showing the surface in solid, what we are gonna do is get just the surface shown represented in red and as solid. Let's hide it as indicated, sorry, not ribbon, there. Mm -hmm. A more complicated process uh, depicted here will imply the following. Show the surface of adenine and thymine deoxynucleotides in chain B only. So select selection mode append. Let's do that. Select selection mode append. This is going to be the equivalent with the menus as we as clicking the mouse button with the control key as well as the shift key pressed and then but without using the mouse and then select residue DA residue the team and you see the selections are added not replaced and then cha change the selection mode again to intersect Select chain B, mm -hmm. and then action surface shown. So what we did was first select one type of nucleotide, append the next selection, and then only the parts of the first selection that intersect with the chain being B.
And what we got is pretty much this image, only one side of the DNA with surface where it can be assigned to adenines and timines. We restore the selection mode to replace. And clear selection. So that's it. The, here what we have is the text for the command line equivalent for this, which says surface for deoxyadenine from chain B, uh, comma deoxytimine from chain B. And of course, sometimes let's let's use it. I'm just gonna go copy and paste. Oops. <gasps> what did I do? Oh, of course, sorry. The command that was there at the bottom was the command stop and that closes Chimera. Uh, well, I think, yeah, so I did something similar. I, of course, destroyed my work and only replaced a bit. And you can also, so what I wanted to go back to this version of doing these things with the command line, but also shown you that in the surface menu, you can go for transparency. Sometimes can be useful to have very nice representations. And well, that's it. So for today, we cover fairly quickly how to works, work with DNA, surfaces, and ways to select nucleotides and different molecules in order to emphasize either interactions or these very same surfaces. Well, I hope you have enjoyed it, and I hope you join us this is going to be the, the new schedule it's going to be moved to tuesdays and at 1 p.m uh, central mexico time and well um, this is going to be uploaded to twitch as well as to youtube S if you have some comments if you would like this to be another hour so people could participate please drop me a line i'm here always for you listening to my audience anyway have a good day